Hello, hello, hello everyone. It's Lestina Inspires. I'm back with your Friday poem reading. I know I've been gone for a minute, but I'm back, y'all. So let me reintroduce myself. My name is Lestina Inspires. I have I am an award-winning author of my very first first book of Main to Come called Rebel Inspired, a poetic journey into awesomeness. And so what you have tuned into is my Friday poem reading where I take a poem from my book, break it down with the meaning behind it, um, ask some self-reflective self questions of you guys where you actually need to think these questions through and you don't have to answer in the comment section, but it's for you to really think on your own and to answer those questions between you and God. And so... This is what my plan was every single Friday to do a poem for my book until I was done with all the poems. And so in the month of November and December, I kind of just took a, a rest period where I was in a self-reflective state where I just kind of allowed God to pour into me. Because I realized that as I was reading the poems, as I was doing what I was called to do on my journey of healing and helping others to heal, some um some other things just came up that just reminded me of what I had gone through and I realized that I needed to take a break back to allow God to pour into me because when you're constantly pouring out 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 into others you have to go back to the source of where your gifts comes from and that's God and so I went back to my creator set and rested just took some time, fasted, did everything I needed to do to get myself back on track so I can bring my best self forward. And so that every content that I produce for you guys is from a place of being healed and not having old memories brought up that kind of just like resurface and cause, you know, more pain, so to speak. So moving right along, the poem that I'm going to be reading from today, and if you have not gotten my book, please do. It is on Amazon.com, as well as I do have some in stock. Um, but if you need it shipped, if you have a Prime account, you can get it shipped the same day or the next day for free. Woohoo to Amazon Prime. Um, but yes, so the poem that I'm reading today is Midnight Run. And it's on page 36 of my award-winning book. But before I get into reading the actual poem... I want to ask you a few questions for you to just self-reflect and think upon and then you can come back to those questions after I've done reading the poem and giving you my take on a mind behind the scenes perspective of where this poem, um, what this poem was to me at what point in my life. So the first question, question is what keeps you up at night? What keeps you up at night? Second question. Why are you living in bondage for what someone else has done to you? Why are you living in bondage for what someone else has done to you? Third. Are you willing to allow God's love to shift your perspective and ultimately your life? Are you willing to allow God's love to shift your perspective and ultimately your life. Fourth question, last one. Do you realize that you are not your abuse? Do you realize that you are not your abuse? And these questions will be posted. Um, I will have them up so you can, if you, during the course of this video, if you forget, if you didn't get a chance to write it down, I will have the, video, the questions posted. So. Midnight run, the cry of pain, the tears of joy, the laugh of irony, the fist of love. Our twisted passions led to a straight path of sin. Or maybe not unless you give in. Stories untold often unfold. The secrets that lie beneath the exterior are often kept away from the superior. For fear of rejection, detection, and quite possibly unwanted affection. Midnight is the time when one's day turns into night. The time when dreams, hopes, and ambitions take flight. So run, lost soul, run. Catch up with yourself. For you are who you say you are. Why exist if not for one own self? Snap, 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 snap. Clap, 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 clap. Hey, okay. 
So, <laughs> I'm so silly. So some of the key words that I want you to take away from this when you're thinking about these self-reflection questions are, are some of the key emotions and key experiences are shame, guilt, nightmares, and sexual abuse. And a lot of times, those who've been abused, um, not just sexually, but it's been abused, experience nightmares, um, especially if the individual came into their room at night and did unwanted things to them. Shamey guilt comes up because somehow we as the abusee feel like it was our fault that we could have done something to stop it. Get my book out of my room. Um, and so this poem for me talks about trying to run from my past and the things that hurt me and express and I express my unwillingness to accept the damage that has been done to me um, internally and eventually ref reflecting externally to me. Um, I've suffered from night from nightmares most of my life up until about a year ago and at this point what really started me to want to address that these nightmares were coming from a deep rooted um, sense of the shame and hurt and pain was that I realized that I needed healing and I needed deliverance and so deliverance from the demons that plagued me like literally when I was abused for most of my life sexually abused emotionally abused physically abused and so Every encounter with an individual that abused me left a piece of me broken. It, it did something to me internally that was deeper than just, you know, praying in a way. It was actually confronting those those demons, confronting the very thing that I was afraid of. And that was just addressing the, the feeling of, of helplessness, the feeling of vulnerability, the feeling of, like, no one was there for me. And so... And at one point, I literally was afraid to go to sleep. Like, I mean, there was there was many nights I can remember just laying in the bed, and I was afraid to close my eyes because I was not, I wasn't sure if I was going to wake up the next morning. Um, that's how deep and that's how aggressive my nightmares were on just like a whole other level. And so, um, and it's a funny thing, the, the things that we take for granted. But now, as I have gone through the healing, I'm going through the healing process. I start, when I started the healing process, when I went to church and I actually got deliverance from the demons and things that plagued me, I was able to sleep. And I didn't realize how, how powerful and how impactful a good night rest is. And the, the very thing that most people take for granted, just sleeping, I just, every morning to this day, even now, I wake up and like, thank you, Jesus. I got, I woke up to another day. I was able to sleep because it's something that I, you know, didn't experience often. Um, and so I, and maybe the question you might be asking is, at what point did I realize that I was having nightmares? Oh, when did the nightmare start? And so the nightmare started around, I could say maybe around two years old and that may be the pivotal point when the abuse started. I really don't know. It could have been a, a point before I was two. I just remember being two years old and having nightmares. And I also remember um, being young and never sleeping without covers. Even now, I still sleep with covers on me. It could be a thousand degrees outside and I still need to have covers because that sense of being exposed and being vulnerable um, I don't like how that feels. I don't like my, like, just my, my body not being covered up while I'm asleep. And so, that's something that I can remember as a little girl just balling up under the covers and co covering over my head as my way of protecting myself. And so, um, another key point where I talked about was shame was body shame. I, um, was really ashamed of my body. I didn't like how I looked. And as I got older and became more womanly and became more shapely, I even more so was like, oh my God, people can see me. And so even now I love my body, but I still have moments where I sometimes feel extremely like exposed and vulnerable. And, and you know, when I, when I want to, you get the, the stares or the, the, the looks of admirers, you know, as a woman, men look. I mean, men, men are visual creatures. And there's no disrespect to men. But for me, it was just like, okay. You know, and so a lot of times I spend a lot of my, my 
my younger years and up leading up into probably like mid 20s wearing baggy clothes i didn't really like to wear fitted clothes i didn't like to wear anything that really showed my shape even now sometimes i don't like to wear things that are too like fitted i feel uncomfortable but slowly but surely i am working my way out of that and so and then the last thing that that affected me was the being touched so like hugs were like out of the question for so long until God really broke that in me by my son, one of my my youngest son, he's a hugger. Even now he hugs. And so that was a point in my life where I was like, you know, this is not normal to not want to hug. You know, and, and I said, Okay God, I'm gonna have to, something has to change. And so when he was born, as he got older he just hugs and hugs and, and I can feel myself inside cringy, but now um, I hug. If I if you meet me out, you know, out and about and meet me for the first time, you will get a hug from me. Because I've been delivered from from that which had kept me in bondage, that that whole not wanting to be touched, that feeling like you know, that icky feeling and all those things that came came with it. And so now I look at hugs as God's way of of, of just loving people. Like physically like me hugging someone else is like God saying I love you you know through me hugging that person and so that is my you know testimony from that poem where nighttime for me was not a good good experience and now I'm able to run free I'm able to sleep free so to speak not run free um but I also do sometimes in the middle of the night I wake up and I have the, the greatest creativity the greatest ideas and so I have learned to embrace all of me and I've learned to to not allow what was done to me make up me, call it be me. That's not me. What was done to me is not who I am. It was just what happened to me. So I hope that this poem reading was insightful. I hope that you were able to maybe shake some things loose from you. I hope that you are able to, if you are watching this and you have been abused or you are being abused, know that you are not your abuse and you have every right in this world to live a free life and to be loved how God wants you to be loved and so I have my book at the cover this is it it's, this is how it looks so if you go to Amazon amazon.com you type in rebel inspired you type type in my name Liz Steiner inspires um, you can also go to my website, lasteinerinspires.com and purchase it. It's L-I-S-T-I-N-E-R-I-N-S-I-P. Okay, no, okay, that was a slow moment. Don't count me again. Don't count that against me. L-I-S-T-I-N-E-R-I-N-S-P-I-R-E-S.com. Total slow moment, sorry. But you know what I meant, and this is how it looks. So... You guys have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Blessings. Love you guys.